Tell you what, a farmer without data is kind of like a marching band without its director. And without it, your fields, or band, might sound and look a little something like this. Now, if you give a farmer actionable insights, or a band its director, they can make every component and each variable on the farm, or band, play the right note at the right time and march to a tune that yields success and ultimately helps us chase down the next bushel. Take it away, Mr. Ruggles. This growing season, join me as I meet and talk with expert growers, agronomists, researchers, and breeders looking for ways to get more performance from each and every soybean to help you chase down the next bushel. So far in this series, we've been down to the Boot Heel of Missouri, up north to Minnesota, and a little further west out in Nebraska. But in today's episode, I'm proud to bring y'all home with me to Mercer County, Illinois where my mom and dad have been farming since the mid-70s. My first stop in this technology episode will be talking to our local DeKalb Asgro dealer. Jason, how's it going? Hey, Clint, how are you? Doing well, good to see you again. It's excited to be here in uh, my hometown of Seton, so. Yeah, downtown, huh? Yeah, downtown of this big old uh, metropolis here. So why don't you give us a little history of your business here? I actually bought this business 10 years ago. It was a very hectic time. We were building a house and the twins were being born. And my wife was actually in the hospital for six weeks on bed rest. And, and I took over a seed business. Kind of some great planning. <laughs> You've also named this Raider Brother Seeds, right? Which is kind of for your boys, isn't it? I've actually got three boys, so it all worked out perfect. That's setting up a nice legacy for yep, them. Yep, yep, so. exactly. Yeah, that's awesome, man. I wanted to stop by and have a conversation with you about uh, just technology and agriculture. Technology is always changing and we think we always have stuff figured out and then Mother Nature throws us for a loop a little bit, but the technology helps us kind of put the data together and, and we have a way better idea of what to plant, what to use. How long ago did you, did you have a uh, precision planting dealership? So that started about seven years ago. And I know that's been just a huge market for you there. You know, as farmers ad adopt more of this technology, what, what have you seen some of the, the biggest updates on that part of it? You know, a lot of it is you can plant things a lot faster. So there's a lot of guys went with high speed. We have smart farmers now that tell you the soil temperature, moisture, organic matter. Yeah, I, I know too, Jason, that you've been a supporter from the beginning of Climate Field View as well. What have you heard from your farmers you work with that have been collecting data on that system? You know, climate's been tremendous. If we're seeing problems, we can go out to the field and pinpoint that and say, hey, we need to keep an eye on this, see where we're going and what the next step would be and how we can, you know, up the yields. I think a lot of guys are starting to gather this data and they're getting more comfortable with it. So I think it's just keeping the data closer to them and they don't have to look for that notebook that they've been using over years. You know, you, you start with the, with the seed, you have ties to the planter, and then you ultimately have ties to the data that the, that the planter is all collecting and everything. I mean, it just seems like all of that flows just pretty seamlessly together. And it's a great process. I mean, it, it makes you sometimes second guess mother nature because you get out there and you're like, man, this great in this field and why is it bad? And you almost become like a doctor trying to diagnose what the problem might be. Yeah, well, and I would assume once you diagnose it, you're probably writing a prescription for it then as well. <laughs> exactly, yeah. I actually helped pick a plot yesterday and the guy's like, if you want to put a couple numbers in here, that's fine, but we want to save time. And we get in there with the iPad and put in the drive and went through the field and picked it. And he's like, wow, that was quick. So I'm thinking maybe <laughs> next year we're going to put a few more numbers yeah. just so we can see how it performs in that irrigated sand. Well, Jason, I won't uh, take any more of your time. I appreciate it. I know this is a busy time of year, so uh, I'll, uh, I'll head on out of here, but I appreciate okay. your time. All right, thank you, Clint. Have a good one. You bet. Tanner, how you been? I've been good, man. How are you? Been good. Good to see you again. Yeah, nice Appreciate to see you, you having well. me down here. Well, you're the expert in uh, in digital here, so I figured, uh, how about we talk about a little technology? Yeah, absolutely. Let's do it. All right, let's head on into the office. All right, sounds good. Hey, 
Look at these. I thought these were uh, kind of interesting. There's a, a book from 91 of all of the hybrids and varieties a dad would have planted. The earliest one I found uh, was 1977. That is cool. Doug Chaffer, he was he was on top of things. If a farmer is going to go from writing stuff down in one of these little notebooks to really utilizing, you know, a, a platform like Climate Field View, what do they need? From us, you know, if you just have a, a Field View drive, an iPad, and you can connect that up into the cab, that's all you need. Well, I tell you what, we are actually actively running this right now in our red combine. So I've got one of these plugged in. You know, and I was going to show you uh, one of the fields that uh, that we ran some check strips in. So we got uh, some Asgro beans. So I'll jump in here to uh, to field nine, and we ran a couple a uh, couple population checks in here. Uh, you can see, actually, like I said, we're we're harvesting this uh, right now. But uh, I'm going to jump over here into our planting, and you can end up seeing where we ended up running uh, different population checks. How simple was that to to document where you did a population trial? I mean, heck, I just adjusted the population down and did it. Two so, clicks of a button, right? Yeah. That's the whole thing. If, if you don't have to go out of your way, the ability that technology has given them on equipment has made collecting data in these trials easier. Looking at your screen, we were looking at the trial, but I noticed you had a different population on the east side of the field. <laughs> and I'm looking at your field health image right there, and I was kind of curious what that was showing me. So the red spot, at least coming through here, is uh, that got drowned out. So we had a, a pretty wet spring uh, earlier, so uh, there's there's nothing there. Um, I did drop the population. This is a sand hill, and what we noticed uh, with dropping the population this year is that it, uh, it kept its foliage a little bit more. Um, is there a way that I can see something here, mark it, and then go out to the field and check it? Oh yeah, you can literally click on the screen right here, drop a pin, take some notes. Wow, so if we sit here and we drop a pin on that little red area, ah, I got gotcha. you. We'll do a check. So basically that little pin right there, now that'll show up either on the phone or on the iPad. Yep, pull it right up, get out of the truck, walk right to that spot. This is a great tool, you know, if you can't document your planning data or you can't document your application passes, uh, scouting images are about as good as an indicator as anything else for yield uh, when you get into that August, September time frame. So you can see right here on your east part here, it was a higher biomass. Yep. If you can't collect data spatially, great tool just to have in your back pocket. Uh, these are maybe like a 10 meter resolution, but you can get down to a centimeter resolution. Partnering up and flying your drone over, uh, I think one of the cool benefits from, from some of these partners is stand counts. Yep. So seeing where every single plant is in that field, is invaluable come springtime yeah. when you're trying to decide if you need to replant. And this gives you that ability to do so. Now, I got to bring it up. When my data is in here, uh, whether it's, uh, you know, maybe my, my seed dealer, maybe my, my chem rep, uh, do I have to give people permission or does anybody have access? Yeah, that, that's the beauty. I mean, your data is your data until you want to share it with who you'd like. And you don't have to share your whole operation. So if you want to share just the field nine that you're looking at nope. with your retailer, share field nine. And when we're sharing uh, a field data like this, is it every layer all going through then? You can choose to share every layer or if you want to exclude uh, maybe a harvest layer out of there and yep. you only want to share planting, you have that ability. Oh, so a lot, of, a lot of flexibility on the on the privacy side then. Yeah, absolutely. So what do you think about uh, you and I head on over to field nine here and hop in the combine and, uh, and just see some of this data coming in live? Oh, that'd be awesome if we can check out that trial. Yeah, I'd like to see how that ended up performing, so. No, that sounds good. All right, let's get out of here. All right. Need to warm her up a little bit. What's going on on uh, on your guys' family farm? Are you guys harvesting corn, soybeans? Uh, we actually we were on corn till last Sunday. Yep. And then we actually switched over to soybeans, and we've been running as far as we can. So uh, how are the corn yields? Better than expected, honestly. Yeah. And I think fungicide for us, I think we are a firm believer on every acre anymore. You can kind of drive around and see hybrids and, and varieties that didn't take it as well, but. Uh, but I think overall, it's exceeding expectations. Yeah. So it, very, very pleased overall. But what about you guys? Our soybeans, like I was saying, you know, I mean, they're doing uh, incredibly well. You know, I think we planted them at the right time. I think that uh, application of fungicide 
there that, uh, that they got put on, I think really, really helped, helped them take off. And uh, a little cover crop going in, I would assume. Yeah. Corn is, is one of those where we have so many low lying spots. We always say that we're a two to three inch rain away from having 30 acres ground out, right? But the overall yield so far, we've been, we've been pretty happy with them. Well, Tan, it looks like we're, uh, we're here. We call it field nine. We get real, you know, creative with our, our field names. All right, what do you think? Well, if you want, just jump up in the cab and I'll remove you from the edge here. Hey, works for me. All righty. All right, Tanner, what are you seeing on your end? Clint, hey, I'm connected. Everything looks good up here. Seeing these yields coming through for the sand ground that it's in, that's pretty impressive. What are we in? We're in two sevens, right? The 27 XF1s, uh, they've really just been performing pretty good on quite a few different soil types for us here. What are you seeing over there on the on the east side of the field compared to our, uh, our field health image? Let me split my screen here, take a peek at that. If I'm looking at that field health image that we looked at earlier, man, it is spot on for what you saw for yields. Yeah, I'm showing a, a field average so far of uh, a little over 66, which I tell you what, for our farm and the conditions on this field, I mean, we're pretty happy with that. From the cab here, I do see a, uh, a pin, a scouting pin, that, uh, that you and I dropped when we were in the office there. They're on the, the west side of the farm. I, I'm, I'm actually seeing that too now. I know you got a little bit of a few passes to make to get there, but with what I'm seeing right now for results, everything looks very promising. Well, hey, Tanner, I just want to say, uh, you know, thank you for uh, for coming out here and, uh, you know, walking through some of this. I think I'm going to stay out here and keep on going, and uh, you can grab your truck. Sounds good. Hey, I appreciate you letting me join you out here, and I'm sure we'll be in touch soon. All right. Sounds good. Take care, man. So we've talked a lot about technology and collecting data and turning that data into actionable insights. And every little bit that we collect helps us chase down the next bushel. Join me next time as this fly enters my ear hole. So join us next time as I head on back down to the headquarters, down to Chesterfield, and we talk all about breeding. But before we do, I do wanna give a special thank you to Mr. Ruggles and the Mercer County Marching Band. That was absolutely great and thank you for joining us. Well, I better get back to it.